The next movement is the gigue, which is a lively dance. So uh, this is in 12-8, uh, think of it in and four. It's a very light movement right before we hit the chaconne, which is the last movement of the D minor partita. So I love knowing that this movement Is, is so obviously a dance that I play this way. I, I Sometimes when I play, I feel like I'm dancing it within those motions. And to achieve that sound, right, think of it in four. Mm, don, two, or big twos. Ah, uh, one. Feel the internal rhythm before you play. One, two, three, one, two. These opening bars, these eighth notes here. One way to, to really find the dance is to take out a couple notes and just, just play the strong beats. This motion, you can just do it with an open string. Add the other notes. Now add all the notes. Now when you add all the other notes, um, it should feel the same way as you were to play with the strong beat. So that's an exercise you can uh, use at home just to get the feeling of this of this movement. Next up, all these sequences, all these sixteenth notes should feel light. You know, they, uh, this is again a lively dance. It's not. That's a great way of practicing, though, just to learn the notes with the core sound. Slow practice. But essentially, we want to get this sound. The buoyancy of the bow, let the bow work itself so that all of these sequences sound like they're flowing rather than being dragged. And then actually, again, use open strings. Try each strong beat, emphasizing the strong beats of each, and see if you can get your bow, the buoyancy of the bow, to just work itself. You might be seeing that I'm holding the bow quite high for this, uh, but that's okay. You could have a regular bow hold and get the same effect. I just prefer this because I like the sound of it, and uh, Baroque bows used to be a little different. Um, I'm trying to trying to be cool. But the, the regular bow hold should be, should be fine. There should be no tension with your right arm, your bow arm, or in the fingers. Um, the, the frog has enough weight to allow the bow to bounce around the middle section right here. Found, find your balancing point and let the bow do the work. And it's just minute wrist motions. Just taking an open A string Get it nice and crispy. Now it's different from... No, that's not what we want. We want a more broad stroke. And then... This will help your journey in this movement to sound crispy and clean. Now let's talk about sequences. Let's talk about all the sequences that Bach writes within this and all the other movements as well. But here we have a lot of string crossings with a lot of these sequences. Uh, for example, uh, measure nine. Same pattern. Same 
So, a way to practice these sequences are... You can stop before the next pattern. Get the bow ready. Until it's second nature. This, a lot of the times, it's very easy for us to... The elbow is in the, in, in the wrong position before moving strings, and then we get this. Right? Make sure that the bow arm is ready for those string crossings. So you can practice these sequences in groups. So, or, or, that's just one. Then put them together. And it's, it, it helps to know your anchor notes, which is, for me, the bass notes here. So knowing that these two notes are what I'm going to use my bow speed on. And so forth. So practicing all these patterns, these sequences, in groups rather than the whole passage will really help, um, will really help you master these. At measure 15, you might see a run down, and that sometimes can freak, it's freaked me out before, this passage right here. So those runs, th that run down has many times, and still today, freaked me out, because I get to that run and I want to just rush through them. Very easy to do that because it's a, it's just a run down, it's a scale down. But if we have our anchor notes, and we still feel that dance pattern, that big one, two, three, two, two, three, 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 four, then we can have our anchor notes. For me, this run down at 15, that D on the second beat gives me that anchor to know that that's the big beat that I want to land on. And this next passage would be the A. So to practice that, do the run. Just emphasize it, just in practice. Until it becomes second nature. Of course, we don't want to emphasize it too much. It's part of the, it's part of the lick, as we call it. But internally, just know that that's your anchor point. So finding these kind of anchor notes will, uh, will help clear things up um, so they're not a jumble. So these dance forms are generally A, A, B, B, meaning A section, repeated, and then onto the B section, repeated. Um, traditionally, this is how they dance, and this was how the form was. Uh, so I encourage you to take the repeats. But each repeat, each A section, do something a little different on the second A. Do something a little different on the second B. Find new ways to, to kind of implement. For me, I like to use ornamentation. You know, first time I might go. And then the second time I might go. Just small little differences to, to make uh, it interesting that I'm not playing the same thing twice over and over again.